I'm Mohamed Dalal, I'm the Dean of uh, Georgetown University in Qatar. Uh, just moved there recently. Uh, uh, I work in Islamic studies. My uh, areas of research, my primary areas of research are history of science and uh, early modern Islamic thought and movements. Um, and uh, I work on traditions of knowledge and traditions of learning in the Islamic, in the, in the Islamic world and their evolution over time. My personal story, I, I used to be a mechanical engineer and I practiced engineering for a few years. Before I studied Islamic studies, I moved, uh, I, I'm born and raised in Lebanon. This is where I got my degree from the American University of Beirut. I practiced engineering in Lebanon for almost five years. Then I decided to go to history and uh, went to Columbia University, studied there. Uh, I sort of, uh, my initial work on history of science drew on my knowledge of the sciences. I'm not intimidated by numbers and math and things of this sort. So I thought this would, it would be useful to combine the two, but, but it's a broader approach. I worked on, on exact sciences as well as, as uh, traditional sciences. Uh, I, uh, after graduating in 1990, I taught at Smith College, then at Yale University, then at Stanford University. Then I went to, to Georgetown University in, uh, in uh, uh, DC, Washington, DC. Um, 2009, I uh, moved to Beirut, uh, to the American University of Beirut, where I served as provost for six years. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was there for eight years total. And now I'm in Georgetown, Qatar. I'm the dean of Georgetown, Qatar. You know, as in many places in the world, there is, uh, there is family pressure and peer pressure to, if you're a good student, to study something useful, the professions. Uh, and I, you know, I enjoyed you know, engineering, uh, and I enjoyed it. I was good at school, so I went as my parents wanted. I went, but I was always, I, I studied engineering and practiced it. But I was always interested in history. I took many electives when I was in the university in history. And, uh, and uh, at one point in time when I needed to make a decision about either moving my career in engineering forward or doing something else, I made the decision to, to do what I you know, what I liked even more than engineering, which is, uh, which is work on history, and become a historian. This is part of the story. You know, one thing that I personally do, I mean, they may not be interested, I don't know, it's up to them to decide. <laughs> uh, I mean, and we academics sometimes are very insular. We work on our small topics and, and uh, they're not relevant. In my particular case, I think uh, the, the topic that I study is very much... Uh, at the intersection of, of modern issues. I mean, I study traditions and I study traditions in the pre-modern period, but many of the issues that I study are still relevant to in, in, in the modern world. The relationship between science and religion, for, for example, is one of the key topics that I work on. The early modern Islamic movements, because it's, to my mind, it's very important to understand what's happening right before the modern period uh, in order to understand the transformations that happen and the sea transformations that happen immediately after that modern period. So that is, and as it, as it happens, uh, the, the specific topics that I work on are, are extremely relevant. One thing that I do uh, in my approach is to study the transformations of traditions, you know, and try to explain why these transformations happen. Uh, that is very important, I think, not just for the Islamic tradition, for any, for any tradition to understand, you know, exactly how and why things happen in, in the tradition and, and, and its, its reception, its, its understanding, its communal understanding and so on. So in that sense, the study of the past is very relevant for the study of the future and some of my work bridges the two and, and connects the two. As I, uh, as I argued in my, uh, in, in my presentation, uh, uh, the, the historical relationship is very diverse and complex. And of course, it has its ups and downs, like all relationships between all communities. I mean, within the Islamic world itself, within you know, the relationship between different Muslim sects and whatever had their own ups and downs. So this is true. This is true of all, of all communities. The relationships between Muslims and Jews historically, uh, the, the position of the, of, of the Jewish community within the Muslim world historically, uh, has, is quite different from the relationship which is influenced and, and, and uh, by, by modern developments, by modern, modern political developments. Unfortunately, quite often, historians end up uh, being influenced by ideological uh, 
influences and, and trends, and they see the past through the prism of the, of the present. It is important to distinguish between the two. It's not that the present is not relevant. It has its own complexities and needs to be addressed. But the past is, you know, in, in this particular case, I think the past is significantly different. The relationship in the past is significantly different from the relationship in the present. And part of the need to to recognize that and to understand that is not simply to, to uh, it's not simply an academic issue, just to make a distinction. It could, it is valid as an academic problematic in its own right to, you know, to understand the past in its own right. But it's if understanding the past enables us to imagine different futures uh, than, than the present in which we live. So I, you know, my hope is that, is that it, you know, a more accurate uh, that way of understanding the past will, will have an impact on the future.